Okay, I'm just going to run through this trust setup uh, just to show you how it's configured, what, what we're going to do with it. Firstly, let, let's have a look and just see what's in the demo environment. We have a hosted Active Directory here called um, HostDC, which is a domain controller, and the domain is hosted.local. You can see that there. Um, nothing in it, it's just basically just purely just so I can show you how these trusts work. Um, yeah, and what we also have is an equivalent. Um, copy of the on-premise AD so if we jump across to that machine that's this one here this one's called on-prem DC and the domain is on-prem.local again there's nothing in it it's purely just to show how these trusts are going to be um, selected and configured so firstly let, let's look at uh, the configuration of the the one-way trust um, in the first instance so what we do is from the hosted side of the world we'll look at our act our Active Directory Domains and Trusts, which is there. Okay, and what we're going to do is we're going to create a new trust. So we're going to trust the on-premise Active Directory. It's very simple to do. Right-click on our, our domain. We're going to go to the properties, have a look at trusts. Down the bottom there, we're going to click on a new trust. There we go. So we get the wizard up. Okay, so. The domain we're going to trust is called onprem.local, so we type that domain in. Okay, it's going to be an external trust because we want it to be non-transitive. Um, so make sure external is selected. Next, it's going to be one-way outgoing. Okay, I know the terminology can be a little bit confusing, but essentially we're going to trust the resource. Sorry, trust the user accounts in the uh, on-prem domain to access resources in the hosted domain. Okay, we want to create it in both domains, so we'll do both ends. Um, you can just create each end in each individual domain if you want to. So we're now going to be asked to authenticate to the on-prem one. Okay, um, for the one-way trust, we're going to do domain-wide authentication. Okay, there we go let it go and what we'll do is we'll just confirm that the trust is working as well there we go you can see the trust was successfully created and confirmed now an easy way to check this um, if we go in and create a shared resource there we go we've got a test folder for example if we go in and share that now we'll share it look at the permissions add somebody. If you change the location you should now be able to see the on-prem um, domain. So, so what we'll do is we'll authenticate to that and we should be able to add users from the on-prem domain now. As you can see there we've given permissions to this folder for anyone who's a domain user on the on-prem domain. So that, that's essentially how the incoming trust works. Um, sorry, it's an outgoing trust, isn't it? But that, that's how the um, trusted model works for the one-way trust by default. That bit's already configured, by the way. Um, it's the next piece that we need to look at, the, um, the, other, the other leg of the trust and how we secure it. So we'll move on and do that piece now. Right, what we're going to do now is just look at creating the other leg of the trust. So what we're going to do is use the on-premise domain and get it to trust the hosted one. It's quite simple to do. Um, Active Directory Domains and Trusts. We're, we're on the on-premise domain controller now. So we select our on-prem properties, going to Trusts. You can see our incoming trust there. What we're going to do is just click New Trust. Okay, and enter our hosted trust there. Our hosted domain, sorry. Click Next. Because there's always a partial trust in there already, so what we're going to do is convert this into a two-way trust. Okay. We're going to create it in both both sides of the uh, the domain structure. Okay, so we have to authenticate to be able to do that. There we go. Now this is important. We only want um, selective authentication at this point. We don't want domain wide. Um, so what we do is make sure it, we've got selective authentication selected, and click next, next next again. What we'll do is we'll confirm the trusts as well to make sure they're in place. 
and hopefully you should get a message saying that trusts have now been confirmed. There we go. So what you should see now is trusts on both sides. So what we'll do now is just look at uh, the effect that has on security. So we now have the trust created. It's two-way. Uh, we've got selective authentication on um, the fact on the on-premise domain that's trusting the hosted. So what I thought I'd do is I'll just show you the effect on security and to show you that it doesn't actually open up access to any resources. So here we are on the on-premise. We'll just double-check um, the trusts. There we go. Domains and trusts. Okay, you can see our trust there, and you can see that uh, we're trusting the hosted local. If you look at the um, properties of that trust, well, for a start, you'll notice it's non-transitive. Going to the properties, you'll see that the authentication is selective. Okay. Now, if we jump into the on-premise um, solution, sorry, the hosted solution, so we're, we're looking at it from the core, um, we shouldn't have access to anything on the on-premise domain. Okay. So what I'm going to do is just try and access the on-prem domain controller. There we go, and we get an, an error saying that um, we can't authenticate. Now the reason for that is because we have selective authentication in place. We need to define which users are able to access which particular uh, services. So let's jump back onto the on-prem, and I'll show you how we achieve that. So we'll, we'll start up Active Directory Users and Computers, okay? And what I'm going to do is create a group, so new group, Okay, we're going to make it a domain local group, or it could be universal, and we'll call it um, hosted app access. Okay, um, we'll create the group, click OK, there's our group, and what we're going to do is add users from the hosted solution that are allowed to um, access this um, resources on this particular server. And the way we do that is pop into members, click add, now we want users from the foreign domain, so you see at the minute it's on the on-prem, so we change that, change the location to hosted, click OK. Now what I'm going to do is allow any user from um, the hosted domain, now obviously we wouldn't do this, we'd lock it down to a specific group or a certain number of users, but there we go, so I'm going to add in the domain users. OK, so we now have a group that contains the domain users from the hosted domain. Okay, what I'm going to do now is allow this group to get access to this particular server. And the way we do that is find the server. In this instance, it just happens to be the DC. Get the properties up. Have a look at the security tab. And what we're going to do is add that group. Okay, so it's host app access. There we go. And the permissions we're going to give it are allowed to authenticate. Okay, so now any user that's a member of that group can authenticate across the domain. All right, so we'll allow that to happen. There we go. Now, if we jump back onto the hosted domain, we should now be able to be able to see hosted resources. There we go. Now, that's not to say we can access them. Um, access is set by security control. So, again, if we go back into the uh, the on-premise, I'll show you what I mean by that. Let's set up a shared folder on our C drive. There we go, test folder. And I'm going to share it out. There we go, we'll share it as test folder, we'll get rid of everyone, and we'll say any domain users can get read access. There we go. So, back into our hosted, we'll have another look at that server on Prem DC and try and get into our test folder. There we go. You'll see that I don't have permissions. So even though we're given permissions to authenticate, it doesn't necessarily mean you'll get permissions to access individual resources. Okay. The way we fix that, of course, is back to the share. Find the sharing. Check on the permissions. And what we'll do is add that group. Um, we'll give them change, change access as well. Then if we pop back to the other side, now when we try and access it, we'll get access and we can do things in lines with the permissions that we've, we've just created. 
Okay, so that, that's in theory how it works. Um, the next step, of course, is that we need to get it set up and get it tested with the application and, and just kind of finalize what expli explicit permissions are actually needed for this configuration.